Yoo-hoo, it's Salman here. <laughs> Whoever made me say that, you know who you are. F*** you, okay? You. Anyway, what's the Restoration Druid all about? So the Resto Druid has a very different form of healing, mostly healing through hots, meaning healing over time, with a variety of different spells that you possess. Rejuvenation is going to be your main heal ability, it's instant cast, simply leaving a hot for 12 seconds or so. Although not so powerful on itself, with your other abilities and applied on multiple targets, it will and should be your most powerful powerful healing ability overall. Life Bloom is a similar ability, it also heals over time, although not as strong. When it finishes, it blooms, healing instantly for a pretty decent amount, but can only be placed on one target at a time. Swift Mend is your most powerful direct healing ability, also instant cast, healing instantly for a pretty good amount on a 30 second cooldown. Regrowth is then your emergency healing on a short cast, also healing instantly but costing a lot of mana, which is something you need to manage as a healer. Also applies a pretty weak hot. Healing Touch is your most spellable castable heal, although you're not going to use it often, doesn't cost as much mana as Regrowth, but has a longer cast time. And then Wild Growth is on a short cast, placing on 6 targets, a pretty strong heal over time effect, decreasing in power as it takes down. It does cost a lot of mana, however, and only lasts for 6 or 7 seconds. Efflorescence is a more targeted heal that you can place on the ground as a circle and it will automatically heal over time, three most damaged targets that are inside of it, also costing a big chunk of mana. As for passives, there are also some to take in mind, one of which is Omen of Clarity, as your life bloom ticks, there's a 4% chance to get a proc to make regrowth free of mana, called clear casting. The other is then Living Seed as your direct healing ability script, such as Healing Touch, Regrowth and Swift Mend, it will apply a seed on the target, and when they are next damaged, the seed will bloom to heal for 25% or more for the amount of the spell that applied it in the first place and that crit it. Ysera's Gift is also another passive, simply healing passively every 5 seconds the most injured member near you. As for cooldowns, there's Tranquility, just your big AoE heal, healing everyone for 40 yards as you channel. Iron Bark is a placeable defensive cooldown to reduce incoming damage by 20% on who you see fit. And lastly, your artifact ability and cooldown, Essence of Gahanir, essentially a buff to yourself to make all of your active healing over time abilities tick twice as fast, making your hots super powerful. As for your mastery, Harmony increases your healing on a target per hot you have active, so if you have one rejuve up and 20% mastery, that rejuve is going to increase all of your healing on that target by 20%. Then if you add, say, a life bloom, it will add an extra 20%, and etc. More hots means overall more healing essentially. But more on that later, as the understanding of your mastery will be one of the first steps to master the rest of the druid. But before that, let's talk talents. First a general build for raiding scenarios, and then the usual go-to for Mythic Plus, and of course talk about other interesting choices as well. On the tier 1, all can be useful to some extent. My recommended choice is Scenarian Ward. Why? Because it's another hot, a pretty powerful one at that, on a 30 second cooldown. Since it's a hot, it will benefit your mastery, plus it combos perfectly with your artifact ability that I mentioned, and the later talent flourish to increase its duration, but more on that in a bit. Abundance is is okay, it's going to reduce the cast time of healing touch and increase the crit chance of regrowth per rejuve up on a 10% amount. Now, you can actually make healing touches instant cast and regrowth a sure crit, but overall, healing touch should be something you rarely gonna use anyway, and the crit chance on regrowth isn't that worthwhile unless you need to do some spot healing or snipe healing, so focusing heals hard on someone specific or reacting to big spikes of damage. 
much for rating, so that's not really your job. Prosperity gives a second charge of swiftment and reduces the cooldown by 3 seconds. Once again, improves your snipe healing and gives you some safety for emergency heals. And even though, like abundance, you can technically use in a raid setting, you can do so much more with Snarian Ward. Second tier is optional, but Displacer Beast is a must, essentially giving you a blink on a pretty short cooldown, improving your mobility to move away from nasty stuff. It does shape shift you to cat form, which can get a bit weird to then use the form to get out of it, then in the middle of a fight can sometimes be a little bit clunky, so in the description you can find a macro where you can just click the ability again to return to your normal self, making it easier to use. The others are fine, such as the heal or the wild charge uh, mobility ability, allowing you to jump to someone else, but the heal is rarely needed and the jump is too complicated to use in a realistic scenario, so the Splitzer Beast is your go-to. Next is your affinities, but they are largely optional as well. Now that said, Guardian Affinity shows the most promise. Why? Because not only reduces your damage taken by 6%, permanently, but also you gain access to Frenzied Regeneration on your bear form. So you can use it to do some pretty good self heals. So for an example, if a boss ability is coming your way, you can just hop onto bear form, that also increases your HP by the way, then after you took the damage, just use Frenzied Regeneration to top yourself off for free, or just do it after you took the damage. You can even couple that with your defensives, making you practically indefeatable, giving you a pretty good sense of security as a healer, plus allows you to tank for a few seconds in very niche situations, but super fun to give you some of that hybrid feel, which is what the druid is all about. The others are okay, balanced affinity can work nice since you can hop on Munken form and deal some pretty decent damage, and feral affinity for the movement speed, the depending on what you need. Next is again optional, since for raiding CC doesn't really matter unless on fights like Coven where Typhoon and Entangling Roots might be useful, so you just kinda have to know the fights to make up your decision. Fifth tier cultivation is practically a must, giving your Rejuve an extra healing over time effect whenever it heals a target below 60%. Another hot is always welcome for your mastery, plus it just can increase your overall healing when you most need. Incarnation works if you desperately need a healing cooldown to make your rejuves cost less mana and heal more, your regrowth to be instant cast, and while growth hit two more targets, plus increasing your overall healing by 15%. Generally you won't need it, but for fights where you see that you're really gonna need an extra cooldown to handle stuff, take it. Soul of the Forest is the least useful and should never be taken in raid settings, making your swift mans empower your next rejuve, regrowth or wild growth. Sustainability wise isn't all that great and can be hard to use it right, even though combos nicely with prosperity, but again not that great for raiding, unless you have the talent lego ring as your lego of choice. Next year all are useful but is gonna depend on the fight. Spring Blossoms can be amazing, essentially adding an extra hot when your efflorescence ticks on someone. As we covered, extra hots are great for your mastery. And even though the healing itself isn't all that great, but for most raiding fights where you have a lot of melee or everyone is gonna be pretty close together, like very Mathras fight, makes this a very powerful choice indeed. Germination is also equally good, allowing you to rejuve a target twice, not only again benefiting your mastery, but increasing your targeted healing although can be more expensive on mana, but allows you to heal tanks better and just heal everyone else a lot more, but you have an extra hot to track and manage, so it can be more difficult to use in a raid setting depending on the size of your group, so take it if you feel comfortable using it. Inner Peace is the least useful, decreasing your tranquility cooldown from 3 minutes to 2 minutes. Now there are cases where you can make this 
rather useful, such as King Garoth fights where that 2 minute timer will align perfectly with the adds, but unless you really need the extra tranquility, go for the other two. And last year, Flourish is a must, a 1 minute cooldown ability, increasing the duration of all of your active hots for 6 seconds. This can be an absolute amazing ability if used right, not only saving you mana to the delayed refreshes on your rejuves, but you can also make it extend things like Scenarian Wards or even Spring Blossoms, and essentially saving you a lot of time multi-targeting with your rejuves. In addition, combines perfectly with your artifact ability. Stone Dark has a very niche use, making Iron Bark more powerful by reducing the cooldown and increasing your heals to that same target, but you're rarely gonna need it unless you need to do some spot healing, but it's not a must. Moment of Clarity isn't all that great also, it will now give you 3 free casts of regrowth and increases its healing by 15%, but your job is mostly to apply hots on everyone, so raid healing, and just manage them. You're rarely gonna need those 3 regrowths, making Flourish so much better. As for Mythic Plus, the idea stays. The first tier, Snare and Ward, is still great to place on the tank, but the others can be equally useful if you feel like you need, so choose what you see fit. On the fourth tier, Mighty Bash obviously is great for the stun, giving some utility, or Typhoon for Sanguine Puddles or Interrupt. And here, Cultivation is still great, although Soul of the Forest functions much better in a dungeon scenario since you can target those benefits better, but I still recommend Cultivation. Next, Germination is practically a must here, giving everyone to rejuves is super easy in a dungeon, and so goddamn powerful when combined with your cooldowns like Flourish and Gah Hanir. The other two aren't all that useful for a group of five people. Last year, Moments of Clarity can be be more useful here, but Flourish is just so goddamn good and fun, so I still recommend it, although Moment of Clarity here can be more viable than before. And that's it. Now let's talk about, I was gonna say rotation, but there's actually no rotations, so let's just talk about every single one of your spells and when you should be using them in a raid and dungeon setting, and then some DPS stuff as well, because why not, and maybe some utility stuff as well. What you're gonna see on the left screen now is just the general priority of your abilities, but that's obviously gonna depend on the situation that you're gonna find yourself in, but take it as a rough guideline. Now, be either in a raid setting or in dungeon one, you need to first set up your mind to what kind of healer you are actually are, and know your weaknesses and strengths. Now in a raid setting, you're pretty much gonna be the raid healer, meaning you're just gonna heal practically everyone in a group and not focus so much on the tanks. So your biggest weakness overall is reactive healing. So if something happens such as the tank got hit hard or your overall group or someone else and you weren't prepared for it, you're gonna be in big trouble, as your kit is very limited to react to such situations effectively. The only option is to regrowth, which works, but you need hots anyway to make it more worthwhile because of your mastery, plus isn't all that powerful comparing to other healers, and you're gonna waste a lot of mana. And Swiftman's is perfect, but has a cooldown. So since you're really bad at reacting quickly, if unprepared, what does that make you? Well, overall, as a druid, you somewhat need to predict incoming damage in order to heal effectively. Because most of your healing comes in healing over time effects, especially with cooldowns like Flourish and Gahanir, which are meant to be used with a lot of preparation in mind, but more on that later. So in order to be able to heal big spikes of damage or anything really, effectively, you need to have your abilities already set up or prepared to use before they actually happen. This is in perfectly with, like I said, your cooldowns, which are useless without preparation. That's where your strength will also lie, since you can prepare much earlier than other healers, besides Disciplined Priests, if you know what you're getting into. The other will be, obviously, since most of your heal abilities are instant cast, you can easily group heal with ease, even on the move. And of course, you also make a great 
sustain healer due to the natural way hots work. So if there's constant damage going on, you're going to be the king of heals since your dots are always ticking for a pretty good amount of time. So with that now in mind, let's talk about your abilities. Then the general idea in a raid setting and a dungeon one. So first, rejuvenation. This is your most frequent and potent healing ability overall. Instant cast, relatively cheap to use, so it's usually the first ability you go to. So in a dungeon scenario, you want to keep this on the tank at all times. On the DPS or yourself, it's just gonna depend on the situation. If there's a bursting affix, which is a great example to give you an overall idea of healing, you want to have them up. So again, when the burst damage actually comes, they get that hot ticking right away. So if you're with germination, you will be able to place two rejuves on the same target. So in a dungeon scenario, it's relatively easy to do. On the tank, you obviously want it to always have the two up. On the TPS and yourself, you just kind of have to see what you're going to need to heal or not. So it's going to depend on the situation. But you usually, if you're going to apply a rejuve because you know they're going to get damaged either because of the mob abilities or fixes like bursting or earthquake, you put the two right away. Remember that in Mythic Plus, mana mana isn't really an issue since you're gonna be able to constantly drink. In boss fights with Tyrannical you might need to manage better, but again, you will need to decide by yourself, either by predicting the damage or if they are already damaged in the first place, of course. And that I cannot really teach you, just comes from experience and practice. But overall, if there's need to be heals, always go for Reju first, if not an emergency. As for Life Bloom, works in a similar way, but it can only be applied once. So you're just going to reserve it for the tanks, which are going to be constantly taking damage. And not much to it, just have it up. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that since at the end it blooms for that instant heal, you don't actually want it to completely drop. Instead, you want to refresh it below 4.5 seconds. If you do so, it will still bloom and it will deal the heal and the duration just gets refreshed with no loss whatsoever on the text. But obviously, if there's some heals needed on someone else, you're going to prioritize that first and forget about refreshing that. But the reason for that is that you don't want to lose a potential Omen of Clarity procs or the clear casting procs. And like Rejuve, it will also boost your mastery, meaning the Rejuves is going to heal for more, which on the tank is always welcome. As for Scenarian Ward, is once again another hot, but this one is much more powerful and needs to be planned better because of the cooldown. So don't use it so blindly like those other two. You pretty much want to use it on cooldown to maximize its uses, but you also don't want to be using it on someone that is maxed, obviously. Like Life Bloom, you're gonna reserve it for the tanks pretty much, or for someone that needs to be spot healed, meaning they might have a debuff heavily damaging them and need to be topped off. Scenarian Ward works great for it. But besides that, just use when your hots, Life Bloom, and Rejuves are not really cutting it on the tank. Now, when using it and to make the best out of it, you want to make sure a Rejuve is up or a Life Bloom if it's the tank due to your mastery. So having those Rejuves or Life Bloom on there, that Scenarian Ward is gonna heal so much more. Hence, the preparation thing again and having those hots always up. Obviously, if something happens and you really need to use it because you need a fast and strong heal and rejuve isn't there, use it anyway. But again, you want to be prepared for those situations. I cannot emphasize that enough. As for uh, those clear casting procs, they are quite simple. You basically want to use them as you get them because you don't want to overwrite the proc. So just use a regrowth on any damaged target. Like these other two, you're going to reserve it for the tank if no other their needs since it applies living seed which heals when they take damage so it's fine to even use when they are at max HP. As for wild growth, it's just a powerful AoE heal, and like the others, you don't want to use in preparation for damage because it costs a lot of mana and doesn't stay for a long time, plus heals more in the beginning. So you're gonna solely use it to react to big spikes of damage when multiple targets are injured. So let's just say more than three or four at least. There's also an artifact trait called Dreamwalker, making your wild growth heal more if it heals a target it with a rejuve up on a chance. So again comes the preparation and the importance to have those rejuves up ahead of time, plus your mastery again. 
Swiftment is a similar use as well, but for a single target. Like these past spells, you want to try and have your rejuves already up, so it boosts its healing due to your mastery. Again, using Swiftment on a target without any of your hots is super weak, so make sure it benefits your mastery unless you don't have any other option. And like Wild Growth, use it to react to big spikes or heavy damage, just to top them off, especially when your hots aren't cutting it. Only after all of that comes your regrowths and healing touches. Healing touches is whatever, if you're playing properly with your other abilities, they should very rarely be used, unless you want to top someone off and you're not in a dangerous situation. Regrowths, you want to save them for emergencies, meaning someone was damaged hard or still is being damaged and you don't have your hots on it because you weren't prepared or you simply have your other abilities like Snare and Ward or Swift Man on cooldown and they desperately need the heals, or they have your hots up but isn't really cutting it, and they desperately need the extra heals. Healing Touch does the same, but takes much longer to cast, so in those situations, just go for regrowths. Efflorescence in dungeons should be like it, very rarely used. With the constant movements that is going on, there's barely any opportunity to make good uses on it, unless on a boss fight or something if you all hugged up, but yeah, in raid scenarios that will be different though. Now that's the general idea for dungeons, like I said, for raiding those guidelines will stay pretty much, you just have to take in mind that you don't have to focus on the tank as much and just focus on the entirety of the raid, so raid healing. Regrowths in general should only be cast with clear casting, besides that your other healers will do the necessary spot healing, so only use it if you really, really must. Remember now you need to manage mana and using regrowths isn't the way to go about it. Healing touch, pretend it doesn't practically exist unless you with abundance. The efflorescence, you mostly want to place it on the melee, so near the tanks or near the casters if everyone is going to be hugged together. Now you mostly want to keep it up, but if you see or know that no damage or AoE damage rather is going to happen to the DPS, don't bother with it and save your mana and only use before actual damage comes, so know your fights, because this is your biggest mana spender, so if you keep refreshing on cooldown, you might be in some trouble if the fight goes for too long, plus if you with Spring Blossoms, it will also boost your mastery. That said, if you feel comfortable with it, just keep using it at all times. The rejuve idea stays the same, just now you can mindlessly place it constantly because you have mana to take in mind. So on the tank, they should be practically always up since they are constantly taking damage. Same goes with life bloom, obviously, and refreshing accordingly. For the other members, will just depend on the encounters. If there's short spikes of damage, you're gonna do very badly, you can use a swift man for it and whatnot, but your rejuve won't have enough time to do its thing because of your fellow healer will get to it first. Your hot will only really come in if there's constant damage going on, so only use a rejuve if you know if that person is gonna take some more damage. But pretty much, if you see someone going down, you're gonna use a rejuve on them. Your healers will probably top them off, but still, that dot will still help on there. But obviously, if there's constant damage going on, you want to place it on everyone, along with wild growths when you see fit for something extra in the same vein as before. The other way, is just the overall preparation thing again. So a simple example would be Garothi during its intermission phase. You know that after destroying a cannon, there will be big AoE damage for the raid. So a few seconds before that actually happens, you want to be applying all them rejuves on as many people as you can. So when the damage actually comes, bam, it starts healing them all immediately. This is also where your CDs will come in that I'm gonna talk next. But this applies to all encounters where you can actively predict incoming damage, okay? Now Flourish and Gahanir, be dungeons or raids, the idea with them stays the same. Flourish, you practically want to use them on cooldown, and you have multiple uses for it. One is that you have a lot of rejuves up and there's still constant damage going on, and instead of just refreshing one by one, you just flourish to extend them. That's where this ability will shine the most. But the main idea here is to save you time and mana. Remember that it also extends all the other hots, like Scenario and Ward and Wild Growth, so you can set it up with it as well, to make them last for a pretty long time. Other time is to use when applying rejuves on everyone in preparation for something 
coming. But midway through that, the first three juves will be nearing the end of their duration. So you can use Flourish to fight against time in a way, so you have everyone properly hotted up. As for Gehanir, has a similar use, and they work great together, but you don't need to use them exclusively together. Best time to use is once again when you have a lot of hots up, especially rejuves, wild growths, and a lot of damage is going on, and that will just make all of your hots heal double as fast, so when they are not cutting it. So back to the Garathi example, you want to use it the minutes the big AoE damage came in, so when those hots that I mentioned before start ticking, and they start ticking fast. The same follows for the Bursting Affix example in Mythic Plus. Just remember that using a wild growth with either of those cooldowns is practically a must. So they get either extended or they're gonna heal for a lot more. Innervate is also great to use in preparation for those two cooldowns, making your next spells free of mana. So you can just go and efflorescence if needed and just spam as many rejuves as you can. Then wild growth as it finishes, then follow with a flourish to increase all of their durations and then a Gahanir to make their ticks faster. But you can obviously just use it to apply multiple rejuves and use a wild growth and an efflorescence since they cost a lot of mana. You always want to use during Innervate's duration to make the most out of it. Coupling with the Bloodlust is also a pretty good idea for the higher haste to lower the global cooldowns so you can use more rejuves during its duration again. With Innervate in general, just don't be afraid to use it, alright? Don't be saving it when you empty of mana, because that's not the only time it is useful. You want to try and use it as much as you can throughout a fight, so at least two times. As for Incarnation, you don't want to combo with Innervate, since it reduces the cost of Rejuve anyway, unless you really need to use it for some reason to save you mana and still be using the cooldown. Gameplay-wise won't change much, will just make your spells more powerful, so use when in desperate need of more healing and try to combine with Hanir and Flourish as well. As for Tranquility, is your oh shit button, so for dungeons use it for such when none of your abilities are cutting it and generally don't combo it with your other coolies as it might be an overkill in most situations. You can also use it the minute big damage comes, so all the being prepared thing, if Gahanir is on cooldown. For raids, they should be called for, but use in the same way to top everyone off. If you have the Lego Trinket, remember to couple with either Gahanir or Tranquility for even better results. And lastly, Iron Bark, save it for heavy damage on the tanks or a specific ability going on on any member that is receiving heavy damage to reduce their damage taken and make your heals easier on them. And that covers it all. As for DPS and utility. So dealing DPS is pretty simple. You should be helping out on DPS, be in raids or dungeons, in moments when any sort of healing isn't needed, so remember that. So you can use some Wraths to deal some damage. They're free of mana, so it's fine, just spam them. Moonfire and Sunfire are also pretty good on damage, the, do the ticks, I mean. But do use mana, especially Sunfire, so careful on that. If you can, though, use them, but mostly in a dungeon scenario. If you with the Feral or Balance Affinity, go to their respective forms if you have some extra free time to deal some more DPS. As for utility, remember your Stun and Typhoon when needed. Ursul's Vortex can also prove valuable to sort of root and slow enemies in Mythic Plus, sometimes can be really amazing if used correctly, so remember to use all of that. And it's not really utility, but always remember your bear form to suck up more damage, and the frenzy the regeneration that I talked before in your talent section. And then your bark skin obviously to just reduce damage and make that bear form even more powerful. And that covers it. As for stats and then to wrap up. So stats usually gonna go master priority, as you probably figure it out, is really good for you for 100 times I mention it on this guide. Because if you play properly, it's gonna highly benefit you. Hence the importance of the set rules and the ideas that I talked over. After it, it's haste is great mostly for reducing global cooldowns, allowing you to place your hots faster on multiple targets. There's also a mouse over macro in the description, so you don't have to constantly click on people and just mouse over and just click the ability and it goes off immediately, making it relatively faster and easier. 
Crit comes after mostly for the leaving seeds, procs, but your hots can also crit, so hey, but not that great. And versatility is the worst stat since mastery just bullies it. Intellect is also the least valuable stat to you. And that covers it all. As always, guys, thank you for watching, like and subscribe for more videos like this. Have a fantastic day everyone, and I'll see you all next time. See ya!